think we are team 11. Today we would like to discuss chapter 12. In this chapter, we will get to know about three theories and the challenges. Leadership, the ability to influence a group towards the achievement of a vision or set of goals. Management, use of authority inherent in designated form or rank to obtain compliance from organizational members. It is not very common topic for researchers to identify the difference between leadership and management, but they are not the same. To put it simply, a leader is someone whom people follow or someone who guides or directs others, like when we are working in group, a team leader who is accurate team make to achieve a mutual goal. On the other hand, management, management is the process of dealing with, leading and controlling people in the organization. For example, in the workplace, managers supervise their staff completing their goals and good leadership and good management are both necessary for organizational success. So let's move on to the three theories of leadership. Uh, it is one of the first academic theories of leadership and it attempts to answer why some people are good leaders and some are not. Three theories of leadership focus on personal qualities and characteristics of many leaders, both successful. Uh, there are a lot of personality traits to illustrate a strong leader. However, high level of extroversion, conscientiousness, and openness are among the most prominent big five personality traits that make a true leader. So to make it clearly, I will give you an example. Check my one of the most successful entrepreneurs in the world. Under he was originally other professions, eventually technology. Eventually technology, he knew the uh, he he knew about the assistance of the internet when he had opportunities to visit the U.S. in 1995. After returning home, he established the Chinese Yellow Page in the internet. Why they never heard of the internet at that time. He shot with the IT of B2B e-commerce and then he managed to develop Alibaba in 1999 and now Alibaba is one of the biggest e-commerce sites in the world. Through Alibaba, he provided a platform on Chinese retailers to sell their stuff online to sell their stock online, not only in China, in China, but also to almost every country. Despite Chinese strict regulation on the internet, it's obvious. Check Ma possesses the personality traits of successful leader, his level of extroversion, how conscientious he has been, and how open he was to new innovation. So, uh, trade theories have a predict the leadership. However, they don't fully explain leadership. So, explain to make it clearly, uh, the behavioral theories is a tool to define. So, to continue, I will start talking about how to identify the central tenet and the main limitation of behavioral theories. Behavioral theories is a psychological framework with which to examine and explain human being. The behavior is explained through action rather than resorting to an examination of intrinsic or internal motivator. Behavior theories of leadership uh, is theories proposing that specific behavior differentiate leaders from non-leaders. The difference between theories of leadership regarding trait theory uh, leadership is inherent so we must identify the leaders based on his or her trait. 
in terms of behavior theory, leadership is a skill set and can be taught to anyone. So we must identify the proper behavior to teach potential leader. The most comprehensive behavior theories of leadership result from the Ohio State study which sought to identify independent dimension of leader behavior beginning with more than a thousand dimension. The study narrowed the list to two substantially accounted for most of the leader behavior described by employees is initiation structure and consideration. Initiating structure is the extent to which a leader is likely to define and structure his or her role and those of subordinate in the search for goal attainment. For example, like um, letting group members know what to expect from them, uh, maintaining definite standard of performance, scheduling the work, to be done or checking the group member follow the standard rule and regulation. Um, considerations um, is the extent to which a leader is likely to have job relationship characterized by mutual trust, respect for subordinate idea and regard for their feelings. For example, like uh, being friendly or treating all members all member as his or her equal, looking for looking out for the personal welfare of group member and making him or her acceptable to group member. The University of Michigan studies also identified two keys of leadership behavior as well. Uh, they are quite similar to the Ohio State finding, but however, the University of Michigan study classified this behavior as employee-oriented, which looks uh, at the interpersonal relationship between the leader and the followers, and production-oriented, uh, which focus on the technical aspect of the job. Next, we move on to the contrast contingency theories of leadership. The contingency theory is specific situational factor which can affect the direct relationship between independent and dependent variable in the study of organizational. Um, there are three key theories. First one is the Fiddler model, uh, Hersey and the Blanchard situational leadership theory, and the third one is Patlow theory of leadership. So for the first one is the Fiddler model. Fiddler contingency model is the theory that affected group depend on a proper match between leader style of interacting with subordinate and the degree to which the situational give control influence to the leader. With the model, the individual leadership style is assumed to be permanent. The least preferred co-worker or as known as LBC Questionnaire identify whether a person is test oriented or relationship oriented by asking respondent to think of all the co worker they have ever had and describe the one they least enjoy working with. After finding a score, a fit must be found between organizational situation and the leader's style. For there to be leadership effectiveness, we can assess the situation in terms of three contingency or situational dimension. The first one is the leader member relations, is a degree of confidence, trust, 
and respect member in their leader to its task structure is the degree to which us the job assignments are perceived to three the third one is position power is the degree of influence a leader has over power variable such as hiring firing discipline promotion and salary increase so next we have graphic representation of fitment model um, this graph how to visual determine the situational factor that and what type of leader would succeed in your situation there are eight possible situations in which a leader can find themselves in by matching their LBC score with their eight different situations a leader can see whether they be, will be most effective for example categories four through six would be better suit for the relationship oriented leader because Fiddler proposed that they perform best in more directly for favorable situations a refinement of Fiddler original models mm, is focused on strength as the enemy of rationality and create a unfavorable condition a leader intelligence and experience influence his or her reactions of to that threat situational leadership theories or as known as SLT is a contingency theory that's focused on follower readiness um, which a follower can accept or reject the leader effectiveness depend on the follower respond to the leader actions readiness is the extent to which uh, people have ability and willingness to accomplish a specific talk pattern theories is a theory that state uh, that it is the leader job assists the follower in attaining the goal and provide the necessary direction or support to ensure that the goal are compatible with the overall objective of the group or organization. Um, the leader So there are four types of leader in the pet grown theories. The first one is directive, uh, is focused on the work to be done. The second one is supportive, or focus on the well-being of the worker. The third one is participate, is console with employees in decision making, and the fourth is achievement oriented. Or is that the challenge goal? Hello everyone, I'm Hương and I will discuss the next part, Charismatic and Transformational Leadership. Now, let's talk about the Charismatic Leadership. In Greek, Charisma is a gift or an extraordinary power these are often traits that a leader is born with, thus continuing the debate whether the leader are born or developed. The leader must have vision, express it uh, as an idealized goal. The leader must be willing to take on a high personal risk and engage in self-sacrifice to achieve the vision. In doing so, the leader needs to remain sensitive to the feeling and the needs of their followers throughout the process. The leader must be engaging in the behavior that are the safest and counter to norm. But how do charismatic leaders influence their followers? Well, there are four steps in process that can help the charismatic 
Lira utilize the characteristic to influence their followers. First, the leader articulates the long-term strategy for achieving a goal. This strategy should fit the vision of the organization. Next, the leader needs to formalize that vision by creating a vision statement. Charismatic leader will often use this statement to reinforce the goal and purpose of the organization. This vision is communicated at a way that expresses the leader excitement and commitment to the goal. Next, the leader will use his work and action to communicate a new set of values uh, for the follower to imitate. Then, the charismatic leader will try to find behavior that demonstrate their commitment to the vision. They will choose behavior that will help followers catch the emotion the leader is conveying and help achieve by in a follower. And finally, the charismatic leader engage in emotion inducing and often unconventional behavior to demonstrate courage and conviction about the vision to help the follower catch the vision. We have two leadership models. The first is transformational leadership. The transformational leadership is a leadership style in which leaders encourage, inspire, and motivate employees in innovate and create change that will help grow and shape the future success of the company. Uh, it can be said that in the transformational leader inspires followers to transcend their self-interest for the good of the organization. There were four different components of transformational leadership. The first is intellectual stimulation. Transformational leader not only challenge the status quo, they also encourage creativity among followers. The, fo the, the leader encourage followers to explore new ways of doing things and new opportunity to learn. Second is individualized consideration. Transformational leadership also involves offering support and encouragement to individual followers in order to foster supportive relationship. Transformational leaders keep life of communication open so that followers feel free to share ideas and so that leaders can offer direct recognition of the unique contribution of each follower. Third is inspirational motivation. Transformational leaders have a clear vision that they are able to articulate to follower. These leaders are also, also able to have follower expectation, experience to same passion and motivation to fulfill this goal. And finally, a idealized influence. The transformational leaders serve a role model to followers because follow watchers and respect the leader, they emulate this individual and internalize his or her ideals. And the second model is transactional leadership. The four behavior represent transactional approach and as a leader process on the scale they move toward more active behavior. We have contingent reward, management by exception in active, management by exception and laissez fair. Transactional leader monitor followers carefully to inform rules, reward success and punish failure. Transactional 
leader focus on the maintenance of the structure of the group. They are tasked with the collecting group member know exactly what is expected, articulate the reward of performing task well, explaining the consequence of failure, and offering feedback designed to keep worker on task. Next, I will discuss about the authentic leadership the, and the ethic and trust. There are two, two components that need to be addressed when discussed about authenticity in leadership. Authentic leaders are set to value input and are supposed to be positive, truthful, open people who will just and generate enthusiastic support to improve individual and team performance. To be a good, sustainable leader, you must be an authentic leader. First and foremost, the authentic leader must be true to himself or herself even when things get tough to achieve and maintain the respect and trust of your team. It is necessary to be consistent, transparent, fair, and able to make difficult decisions. An authentic leader must be empathetic, uh, introspective, and aware of their own strengths and weakness. The authentic leader always has the best to compensate for his own deficiencies thereby strengthening and developing a well-heeled team. When we look at the leadership, we need to look at the more than the result of a leader. We must also look at the step the leader took to achieve, achieve the result. About the ethics and leadership, leader is not free from value when we accept leadership. We must accept not just the goal themselves, but also the means by which those goals are achieved. About trust and leadership, trust is the glue that applies the leader to her or his followers and provides the capacity to organizational and leadership success. When trust is present, Followers are willing to do as the leader and as the engage in behavior that are for the benefit of the organization. In short, followers will do a lot more ta- more uh, leader and trust than for one that does not hold the trust. But and how leader will trust? The first we have. We have three steps to build, to build trust. The first is to create a positive relationship on our team. There are a number of ways to do this, include, including helping employees cooperate, resolving conflict between others, giving honest feedback, and checking in with people about their concern. The second behavior is to demonstrate its birthright and judgment. People are more likely to trust you if they believe you have technical know-how and the experience to make good decisions about the teamwork. And the last behavior is to be consistent. And this is the end of my part. Uh, my friends will discuss network, mentoring, and leading for the future. Hello everyone, my name is Duke, and today I will cover the last three main points of our presentations. So let's come to the first part, is mentoring leading for the future. So in this part, 
I want you to focus on two main decisions. Definitions. Uh, first is mentoring, and second is the protégés. Mentoring is the person have a long time work in the company. They have lots of experience. They have enough ability to solve the problems while working. Opposite of it, of it, uh, protégés is the person that first come to the company and they have less experience, less of confidence and they don't have enough ability to finish their work. So they need someone else have more experience to help them get used to their work. So what is the benefits of having a new person uh, in working place? I will divide it into two parts. First is the career functions. Why working with a person have lots of experience is have a protege uh, can improve their skill, their ability. Uh, they can providing explosion in influential individual in the organizations, and they will act as a sounding board or idea. Second is the psychological functions. I think that. Working in the new place will make uh, a little nervous for a new person and a person with lots of experience, long time working will help them to boost the confidence and they can share the experience for uh, each other and the most important is they can create a new relationship to make uh, the purchases feel more comfortable at the working place. So from here, many people think that helping the protesters with get to get used to their work, uh, it don't bring any benefits for the mentorings. But that's wrong because teaching is also study. They of course they don't they have lots of experience so they don't need any experience from the protesters. But the thing that they get is the relationship and the trust from other people and that is the great step for them to become a future leader. So that's the end of the first part. Let's move to the second part which is finding and creating effective leader. As you know, there's no person was born is a leader, but there was a person was born with a leader quality. So what is the leader quality? How can you find them in uh, a group of normal person? A person have uh, a leader quality is the person that no need to be good at a profession, but understand what it's about. This means that while working, they like can work about 80% of the work, but they know exactly what they are doing, what exactly about they are, what they are containing, and uh, they, they, they can lead another person to do it for them. The second is always passionate about what I'm doing. Why? Why the leader needs to always enthusiastic with uh, what they do because the person always enthusiastic with their work can motivate the employee or other people feel more enthusiastic with their work and they work effectively and the most important things to create to recognize to recognize the person have our leader qualities is someone who always listen to people why I say that the person always listening to other people will become a leader? Because listening skill is very important. It helps you understand uh, other people's feelings. You can create trust and you can make them work more effectively. And it's also perfect yourself. So when the manager, they can they see some leader quality of a person in the group, they will 
make them to become uh, mentorings to share experience for a newbie to prepare for them for becoming a leader in the future. That's finished part two. And in part three, we're gonna describe about a characteristic and transformations leader generalize across culture. So do you think that there are a difference uh, between culture in Chambersik and transformations leader? Of course, yes. Uh, in this slide, you can see that there's four nations. First is Brazil, the Brazilian team people leader who are high in considerations, participated and high LPC score. Egypt, Egyptian employee, value team oriented, participated leadership while keeping a high power distance. In French, French worker while a leader is high on initiating structure and task oriented. And Chinese, Chinese worker may flavor a moderating participative style. That's all for my presentation today. Let me summarize you the whole lecture that our group presents. First is the de definitions of leadership. Second is the charismatic and transformations leader. Third is how to build a trust. Fourth is mentoring and procedures. The relationship between two, two of these definitions. And the last one is the difference charismatic and transformations across culture. So that is the end of our presentations today. Thanks for listening.